Everyone, and welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. I am out here with my buddy Jameson, and we're going to be doing something pretty fun today, reviewing body armor. So Safe Life Defense has sent out some really cool new products that uh, we, we saw at SHOT Show this year. Their new Hyperline vest, which is a really thin concealable vest. I'll show you some B-roll here in a second. Jameson wore it earlier. It hides even under a thin shirt like these. And their flexible rifle armor system. So combined, it'll stop armor piercing rounds out of a rifle. And then of course, this soft armor by itself, as you can see, Jameson's walking around on his phone. He's wearing it right now, looking all 50 cent in the back. Um, so the vest by itself is level 3A, I believe. I'll put it up on the screen. And then this is level three by itself. You combine them, like I said, and you get maximum protection from rifle rounds. So pretty cool. Um, it's pretty neat to see a product like this come out. Um, I've used a lot of vests over the years just at work at the fire department, believe it or not. We do have them on our fire engines. Um, it's just the world we live in today. Uh, body armor is becoming just as important to research and purchase as your carry gun. Unfortunately, that's just the world we live in. Good God, it's hot out here. I'm like sweating in my glasses. Um, so today, we're gonna run it through the gauntlet. I brought a lot of stuff out today. I totally forgot to bring the Gold Deagle. It'd been really cool to shoot it with 50 AE. Forgot to bring it. So, but we got a little cool little ending today for the video. So let's just cover real quick what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be shooting uh, nine millimeter at it, at just the vest by itself. And then we're gonna, as we upgrade, we'll put this in for the rifle rounds. Okay, so nine millimeter out of a HK Expert 9. 45 out of the Expert 45. We have 357 out of this Performance Center here. And then we have 357 out of this Henry. Okay, what I'm, I did that for two reasons. One, I have two different ammo types. Uh, I have a lighter weight round and a heavier round we're gonna shoot out of the pistol. And the same for the rifle. There's more burn time in the longer barrel. So the velocity is gonna be a little higher. So we wanna make sure that it can stop both. Uh, 357 from a pistol and a rifle. While you're watching guys, just keep in mind, I'm gonna put any statistics on the screen as far as bullet weight, what we're shooting, stuff like that. Even the class of the armor, say, so there's no mistakes here. So just keep in mind, I'll put that on the screen. Uh, and then we have a Super Sorty 12 gauge shotgun. I brought some slugs and buckshot for that. And then we have a 16 inch barrel Knight's Armament here. We're gonna shoot uh, ball and uh, armor piercing out of that. And then last for the rifle round, we have the 6.5 Creedmoor and I brought some really, really, uh, let's say high BC rounds with the little ballistic tip on it. Uh, those are horrible against armor, small surface area, super high speed. So as far as non armor piercing projectiles, this one still is moving fast, really good bullet design. We'll see if the vest can stop that. And then at the end of the day, if you're still watching the video, I brought my Select Fire Glock 17C and a 100 round beta uh, mag for that. So we'll just destroy the vest at the end of the day for fun because eh, that's what this is. All right, so that pretty much covers what we're gonna be doing today. Let's go ahead and get shooting. Our dummy today is going to be Jameson. So he's kindly uh, volunteered to wear the Hyperline without the rifle plate. We're gonna start with nine millimeter, as I said, and work our way up. Jameson, you are brave. Let's go ahead and get loaded here. You ready, buddy? Yeah. All right. We're going to be starting with the HK USP Expert 9 with a 124 grain full metal jacket. Here we go, Jay. You ready? Jay? <laughs> you all right, buddy? <laughs> we did not shoot jay come on give me a break all right so our rubber dummy here took the round for us and as you can see center mass hit with the nine millimeter and it did not go through as expected so it hit about uh let's see two inches or so inch and a half below the neckline where the armor ends here Nice solid hit and it stopped. So let's uh, go up to 45. You're retired, bud. You're good to go. 
All right, nine did just fine. Let's uh, try the HK Expert USP 45 here. Got the 230 grain. Uh, this is a match round from Freedom Munitions back in the day. And let's go ahead and get to it. All right, let's go check it out. Solid hit right in the middle, huh? Mm. Oh, you can see the bullet, look. Look at that. Oh shit, yeah, that's what I was looking for. That's awesome. I figured it was sitting. It's hot still. And did not go through. No point in taking this off the vest each time. What was that? A piece of the rubber. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, not surprised there. So, 124 grain, 9 millimeter, 230 grain, 45. Let's do 357 pistol and lever gun. Okay, now we're going to move up to 357. We have a 158 grain full metal jacket, and then we'll shoot the 125 grain jacket at hollow point. God, dog. Weapon clear. Let's check it out. All right, 357 full metal jacket impact right there. And nothing. As you would expect, it did tear. Oh, well, hold on a second. Ooh, no, it's in there still. Ow. That's hot. So it did tear the vest. So let's go ahead and remove it and take a closer inspection just to be safe. Uh, it just deformed the, the back here and tore it against the rubber dummy, but we want to take a closer look. Any actual penetration? No, mm -hmm. it just ripped the carrier on the inside. You could feel the, the bullets in here, feel it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was hot a second ago. So just a tear? Yeah, just a tear. But yeah, actually you can see the back of the bullet right there. The blood base. Okay, let's strap her back up and do the jacket at hollow point 357. All right, so the full metal jacket did good. Let's try the 125 grain jacket at hollow point here. See if we can get it to punch through. Whoa, God, that, was a, that had some more ass behind it. 125 grain jacket at hollow point verdict is Let's, let's just undo it. God, it's... <laughs> Didn't even tear it that time, huh? Well, it was it's, it's it was right. probably earlier, the full metal jacket one. It like hit up under this peck void, and that's probably how it tore. It probably hit like that. Yeah. But that's in. It's in there. It right. didn't even really do much to the back, huh? Right there. All right, so 9 millimeter, 45, full metal jacket, uh, 357 and jacket at hollow point. Let's uh, oh, let's let's step up to the lever gun. Let's see if that barrel velocity will do anything here. All right, let's try the Henry Big Boy X here, chambered in 357. Got the 158 grain full metal jacket. Let's see how she does. We got slow mo running down range and boy, that hit hard. Full metal jacket, 357 out of the Henry. Which one was it? This one or that one? I think that was a 45. Is this one? Go ahead and undo it. it. Tore the back a little bit. Got all the paint from the rubber dummy rubbing off on it. It did not go through. It just tore it again. Yeah. All right, moving on up to the 125 grain jacketed hollow point out of the Henry. Man, that hits with some ass. All right, here's where we impacted with the 125 grain full metal or uh, jacketed hollow point out of the Henry. No pass through. As you can see, and again, it's like hard to feel where the projectile is. I think they're just going so fast. They're just deforming flat is what's happening compared to like the slower, heavier, you know, pistol rounds. Uh, pretty impressive. We're gonna have to cut this thing open when we're done and see if they're in there or if they like bounce off. All right, now let's move up to the Surbu Super Shorty with a one ounce rifled slug. No rifle system in place, straight up 
Hyperline soft armor. God, this would suck. This could actually be hard to aim. Like I've only just like sprayed and prayed with this thing. I wonder if I can uh, do this. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Shit. Oh God. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> So I guess it would help if I hit the t armor. Uh, yeah, went right through it. And this one was from off camera earlier while we were doing the Jameson skit. I actually missed the armor earlier. You guys haven't seen that yet, but yeah, missed it. There was that miss with the nine millimeter for the intro scene. And then here was the shotgun slug. So let's try that again. Okay, let's try the slug again. See if I don't miss this time. It's actually really hard to hit with this thing. I'm just gonna aim low. It's like I hit it that time, huh? Yeah. Holy crap. That's <laughs> impressive. Look what it did to the vest. It stopped it. There was our miss earlier. I shot right around here. It actually stopped the slug. There is huge deformation in the back, as you can see, uh, but it did not pass through. I mean, it'd probably kill you anyway, but hey, you wouldn't be bleeding out um, externally. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to cutting that open with a knife when we're done, That's seeing what it looks like. A little bruise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, slug passed the test. Let's try some military buckshot here. Spray and pray. God, man, that would suck so much ass to get hit <laughs> with buckshot. All right, buckshot also did not go through. You can actually see where the plastic wadding hit the vest here. You can see all the rounds. Obviously, we got some misses because of the spread. Looks like we had one here, one here, one here, one here. It's a stop, 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 stop. So pretty sweet. Nothing passed through on that. So we haven't had anything pass through, have we? No. Jameson's very unenthusiastic. Makes me feel really good about wearing it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's got the Ryan Reynolds like vibe going on this morning. He's just like unanimated, dry humor. Okay, let's step things up a notch considering the vest has done great so far. Let's go ahead and shoot it for something it's not rated for. I got uh, M193 ball, non-armor piercing, but it is still 5.56 ball, shooting at 3A. 3A is not rated for this, but uh, okay, that was cool. Let's go ahead and uh, see what happens. I'm gonna shoot right on the Safe Flight logo. <laughs> you saw it go through. All right, so we just shot it with the 193 ball and right here. That was, uh, what was that? Right. What was this? I forget what that was. What the hell was that? Or was that it? I think it? that's what you just shot, isn't it? Was it? Yeah, because I saw the back blow out. You oh, shit. Yeah. So, oh, because my scope's not set for that range, so I shot low then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. That was not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember this. So I'm like, where did that come from? Okay, so obviously not rated for that. Let's go ahead and throw in the Fraz and see what it can stop. All right, Jameson just took it down real quick to check the inside, make sure there wasn't any other uh, pastors. Let me go ahead and slide this guy in there. I got one hand. You might have to. It's tight fit. There you go, bro. You just got upgraded. How you feeling, huh? How you feeling? <laughs> you feeling better, guy? I would be. I would be for sure. All right. So I wish I brought some chalk so we can mark these, but. Let's just keep this in mind, guys, for those of you at home. We got pass-through, 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 pass-through from other stuff we were doing earlier. Just keep that in mind. Uh, so we got four. One, two, three, four. 
And then uh, we shouldn't have any now through this bad boy. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. All right. God, there's something like really fun about what we're about to do. Shooting a very expensive piece of armor and really sad at the same time. Ugh, God. It like hurts my soul, but it's also fun. It's weird. All right. I'll aim for center mass again. 193 ball, brand new rifle plate, fire in the hole. All right, first round fired. What do we got, what do we got? It's like stuck in there, huh? It's just a tight fit. All right, you can see the ceramic. Look at that. Absorbed all that kinetic energy, nothing. Nothing passed through. It's actually not even that deformed. All right, let's step it up to some uh, SS-109, some green tip. See what we got, steel core. See what it can handle. All right, guys, we got them gangsta green tips, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's see what we got. Shoot it in a different location here. I didn't see anything come out the back. Gangster green tip, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Safe! <laughs> <laughs> yes, awesome. So you wanna go ahead and pull it out for the audience here? Each time you shoot it and it doesn't go through. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing when you shoot it with approved. Uh, and the plate is not all jacked up either. Little tear. Little tear. Yep. Didn't pass through. Little tear there. It's pretty damn impressive, bro. That's a gnarly round. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting that does not feel good. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you can- But you'll be alive. You can stand on range again if you want. I mean, <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let Jameson do some shooting here. Got the 6.5 Creedmoor, the 140 grain ELD. And uh, hopefully the round hits where we want it to because of the scope and the distance we're shooting at, but we'll see. He's gonna aim, he's gonna try to aim a little low. Fire when ready. You gotta see what you're saying with that. God. Uh, Dang, that hit hard. Clear. 6.5 Creedmoor. What would you hit? Here, just go ahead and pull it out. We did not have a pass through. And we had a brain fart and had our ear protection on and didn't need it because I forgot it had the suppressor on the gun. What we got? What we got? You hit low. So, yeah. You right. hit that one, yeah. Wow, look at that. What you got? What you got? Anything on the back? Nothing. That's God, a bulb. dog, dude. Look at that energy, bro. And then remember, you still got another mm -hmm. plate behind Yep. Later. With the soft armor. So. Dude, that round hauls, too. Mm -hmm. There you go. So you can see for the folks at home. Didn't even tear through the back layer there. Nope. Wow. Nice work. Nice work. Rifle plate, pass. Yes. Damn, look, I instinctively keep putting these on. I guess that's a good thing. All right, I'm gonna shoot it with 6.5 Creedmoor as well just because I wanna hear what the suppressor sounds like. Because as you can see, it is the brand new 3D printed titanium baller action from uh sig sour their new can which by the way the mount on this thing super awesome super awesome love it so i just want to hear what it sounds like really but why does well shoot armor too while we're at it i'm gonna shoot close to the other area see what happens focus focus hello Check it out. Dude, that armor hitting is like a weird sound. Yes. All right. Cool. No pass through. I think you hit somewhere low. Let's pull it out and see. I don't know that. Well, no. I think it was low, like really low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right that boy eating. See the back? Woo! Nice little cut. Nothing though. 
caught it. God, dude, it's like a freaking yeah. golf ball. Bigger than a golf ball. All that ceramic just absorbing mm -hmm. all that energy. That's pretty amazing. It is, yeah. actually. So 6.5 cream more would suck. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you survive, it's going to... Why don't we uh, some ribs or something? Why don't we end this video on a good note and just strike this thing with a dual drum Glock 17C? Okay, I'm awake now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beta hunted around mag, Glock 17C select fire, and a safe light armor system. <sighs> and we have a malfunction. Come on, dog. Supposed to be old gangster, bro. Not supposed to jam. Shit. I'm gonna hold it on the table. Alright, full auto Glock. Oh, oh my god. You fucking tore the belly. Look over. at that. 100 rounds of 124 grain. Oh, look, 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 look. That's one of the tiles, dude. Oh, yeah, look that's that. cool. That's awesome. That's a keepsake. That's a keepsake if I've ever seen one. Check that out. Maybe we'll give this to one of my lucky Patreon members, huh? What do we got here? <laughs> Pull out what's left. Yeah. Jeez. Good God. Nothing went through. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was a miss. Yeah. That's a miss. Hit right on the edge. You can yeah. see right here. Right on that pleat. And, uh. Holy smokes. Yeah, I mean, 100 rounds of 124 grain. All right, off camera, let's tear this thing open. Let's tear them both open on the table and take a look inside. Would that get you excited? Yes. <laughs> okay, it was way too hot to continue to film out there, so I decided to come home and set up the studio to give you my final thoughts on this vest. So, first things first, do a quick comparison since we didn't do that yet. Over here, you have the Hyperline. Okay, super thin. I don't know if you could tell just how thin that is. That's both front and back. Okay. Then you had their standard. These are both 3A. This is your standard armor. This is what most departments issue to law enforcement out there. You can tell just how much thicker this is. And it does the same exact thing. Here we go. You have the Hyperline insert. This is from the back panel of the one I'm gonna show you guys in a second. This one was not shot, obviously. Uh, super thin, ridiculous. And then you have the unfired, or should I say the unimpacted shot uh, plates. Now, uh, just so you guys know, I'm not paid to do this review. Uh, they did send the vests uh, here to us to obviously test and then an extra one to keep as a thank you, which was really cool of them to do. They did set up an affiliate link below in my description of the video. Go ahead and click that. And I believe it's a discount, 10% off on armor and then we get a little kickback which is nice pour the money back into the channel other than that uh you know they didn't say hey don't do this don't do that they just mailed us a vest and said good luck to you have fun so that was really cool there was no oversight we basically just made up the review as we went and that's that uh so you guys saw how they did out there we're gonna we're gonna cut open the vest in just a second but i wanted to compare your protection in your coverage to what I typically run. This is a carrier. I forget who makes it. Who makes this thing? Gray Ghost Gear. Okay, just a standard plate carrier with two Hezco ceramic plates in it and a full load out here. I got three fully loaded mags for the AR and then the Glock. These are the extended ones. So the 17 plus ones or twos. I don't know. I forget what it is. But 
I did some weighing here on a little food scale. Stole it from the wife's kitchen, don't tell her. And here are the weights that I got. The Hyperline vest, okay, with both panels, just how it is here, just how you would wear it. This whole setup here weighed in at five pounds, four ounces, okay? And the standard vest, this one here, remember, same protection, a little thicker, weighed in at six pounds, 13 ounces. Okay, so almost a two pound difference there. All right, and then I weighed an individual frass plate, came in at exactly four pounds each. All right, and then I weighed one Hesco plate. You can see here, I took it out, put it on the scale. One of these weighs seven pounds, 13 ounces. So almost double what both of these weigh, okay? Then I was like, all right, let's just keep weighing stuff. So a full vest here, minus the mags, I took the mags out, kept the two plates in. So empty plate carrier vest with no coverage on the side, okay? Just plates. Came in at 17 pounds, four ounces. And then I weighed the Hyperline with both plates in it, okay? So same protection as this carrier, but with more coverage, obviously, okay? You have way more coverage here on the sides, it wraps around, and then you had the same plates front and back, and it weighed in at 13 pounds, four ounces. So a savings of four pounds, exactly, actually. So exactly four pound savings, system to system with more coverage, okay? And you're probably thinking, well, I can't put mags here. Well, you, they sell different carriers, that you can slide in these Hyperline, uh, you know, inserts into, and it's obviously the frass system. So you can make this with more coverage. So then I was like, well, again, I'll keep weighing things. I weighed what all the mags weigh. Uh, I weighed all, all three Glock mags and all three AR mags on the scale. They're all fully loaded. It came in at four pounds. 15.9 ounces, so we'll call it we'll call it five pounds. So the weight savings from both systems was almost an entire fully loaded mag loadout. That's pretty cool. Um, that's really cool. In addition to this product line, they also have basically this, right? But it's all frass. It's all the flexible ceramic. Uh, plates on their website. I forget the actual product name, but it's essentially this in full coverage. So that would negate, you know, needing both of these. You just buy that system and you can slide it in a tactical carrier vest. And now you have full rifle protection, 360 degrees, even on the sides. That's pretty crazy. Also very expensive. They did not send that because, you know, we'd shoot it. So that's kind of a quick overview of the Hyperline versus like standard soft Kevlar versus other rifle plate systems. So definitely cool. I mean, uh, pretty uh, innovative product line. I remember when I saw this at SHOT Show, I, I thought it was like fake. You know, it just looked weird on the walls. Like that cannot do much. But uh, even the uh, back face deformation, if you check the statistics or the um, testing on their website, you'll see that it actually does very well with the uh, composite here and the manufacturing process, um, it's going to be close to what you would find in a standard vest. So pretty cool. Lighter, thinner, same protection. So that covers that. So without boring you guys to death, those the, the stats. Now my thoughts on it did very well. Uh, at the end, when we were shooting the Glock, I had the beta drum mag on the Select Fire Glock 17C. And it's my first time using that mag, it was brand new. And I've never had a problem with those mags at all. I have it for the MP5, for the M16. I think what was happening, there was a little bit of play on the mag catch and the weight of all those rounds pulling down on it, it was causing some movement under fire and it was causing the slide uh, just enough difference in height there to not strip a new round off or cause a malfunction. So when I laid the mag on the table, and supported it, I could feel it kind of close up tighter and the gun ran 100%. When I did that though, I was mainly shooting low here on the vest and I ended up hitting all the seam lines and you saw in the video all the 
ceramic came pouring out the bottom. So I wish I would have got better hits, but you and I both know that just because you're shooting a bunch of, bunch of nine at it doesn't mean it was going to go through. It's still hitting ceramic plate and then it's got to go through this. So there's an old video on my channel that I filmed years ago. I'm talking like 12 years ago and I was shooting some old expired armor just to have fun. This is before I even turned my channel into a business. Um, I was shooting it in my garage with a suppressed gun and I kept shooting like the same spot of this old Kevlar like 200 times. Nothing made it through. So, you know, the stuff is tested beyond its means. Oh, that's cool. Random nine millimeter just fell out. Definitely keeping that. So, I gotta pick up my daughter later. Literally, like, pick her up with my hands. So, I'm gonna try to uh, negate any lead here. And I'm gonna cut this sucker open and make a huge mess on my table. Then I'm gonna have to clean my table because it's gonna be covered in lead dust, I'm sure and ceramic powder. But I wanted to do this on camera with you guys, one cut, no editing, and just see what this thing looks like inside. So here's the back panel here, as you can see. Those are the ones that uh, missed. Uh, you saw that first round we shot off camera missed the very, very edge of the uh, hyperline here. When we were doing our intro joke scene, I ended up shooting like right here and missing it, but whatever so let's just pull out the soft armor first yeah nothing from what i can see made it through this is beat to hell yep you can see where all that nine hit the base of it and tore it there you go i'll hold it here so you guys can see it nothing made it through so a lot of these like pinch points Remember, this was against a rubber dummy, so that dense rubber, those bullets were impacting, and then it was like pushing. There's bullets falling out everywhere. <laughs> it was just pushing against that rubber, so it just like pinches that plastic urethane until it, it snaps. Uh, but from what I can tell here, nothing made it through. I don't know what the hell hit up here. Those were pretty hard impacts. This was, I think, the slug which is going to be cool when we cut that open. Good God, look at that thing. That is cool. There's like flattened rounds in here. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't feel like doing a bunch of B-roll right now. <laughs> so what you see is what you see. Now let's pull out, this is going to make a mess, the frass plate. Oh my God. Frickin' Jameson put it in upside down. <laughs> That would explain a lot. The shooter cut was upside down. That's funny. Uh, okay. Here we go. Or maybe he did that when we were gonna put it on the table and then we decided to put it back in because we we're sweaty and hot and we wanted to go get lunch. I don't know. I'll have to look at the uh, video footage. But you can hear on my microphone, I'm sure, all the crunchiness. There's like jackets, jacketed bullets falling out. Let's go ahead and cut this open from the front here. Wow, that's cool. I'll hold it up here in a second, guys. Just let me get this sheath off. Holy crap. That is sharp. Wow. Maybe I will film some B-roll just because it's really cool. That's too cool for school. Oh my God. My wife's gonna kill me. I'm gonna try to keep. Oh, I'm gonna try to keep all this on the table. So they have this like outer layer here. Oh my god! Holy crap! That is so cool. Look at all these rounds it caught. Look at all these little plates. So that's where it gets its flexibility from. You can see they sandwich the ceramic. Wow, these are like serial lines and stuff on the back, like handwritten. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so that's how it gets its flexibility, all right? They stay, they do multi-layers of these in between normal, probably Kevlar or whatever other material out there uh, that works. That is cool. I'll put that aside. That is really neat. Look at these rounds. These, this is obviously from the 9mm. I can tell by the jacket, by the bullet type. 
it hit so hard the back of the lead base was like blowing through and was just leaving like a hollow jacket in the middle I'm trying to show you what i mean here that's cool probably how it fragmented and absorbed that energy a certain way but you can see flattened actual lead from the nine millimeter most likely a bunch of those wow that's cool so let's peel back our layers here now the rifle round should have like exploded you know when five five six rounds hit that are not seal core like the 193 rounds that we shot at it those should just explode into like lead and copper dust when it hits um, let's peel back some layers here so that's what that looks like I'll turn it slowly you can see the back of that that's pretty cool so this is like just standard whatever the hyperline's made out of. It looks exactly the same. It's just way thinner or uh, thicker. There's more layers here. So I guess there's only one layer of the ceramic. So again, if you're looking at the back, this is the back of it. Nothing made it through. Remember, we shot 6.5 Creedmoor and we shot... Uh, uh, what else did we shoot? We shot ar uh, armor piercing 5.56 and standard 5.56, I believe. Um, nothing made it through. There's one that made it way back here. Jesus. What is that? That is a full metal jacket. Nine. Must have skipped between the layers. That must have been one of those last ones that went through. As you can see there. But again, the vest or the uh, fraz plate caught everything nothing made it through the back wow that's a that is a mess let me uh wow that's pretty cool though i'm gonna have to like go through this off camera and just pick out a bunch of keepsakes and i'm gonna send them to some patreon members if they want them or i'll throw them away whatever you guys comment below if you are a patreon member if you would like some parts from this i'll gladly send some to you in the mail um, now let's cut open the hyperline. See how that did. Uh, one other thing I forgot to mention when we're on the range. This is also slash and stab resistant. And most other vests, wow, are not. A knife will go right through it. Just the way the weave is uh, laid, um, vests have to have a specialty rating to be knife rated and slash rated for like correctional facilities and stuff like that. Um, so this thing, God, this thing better not come unlocked. It is not going through. So that's pretty cool. Quick little test here in the studio. Uh, so let's just cut open the base here so I don't mar up everything. Oh, that didn't even cut all the way through. There we go. What do we got? Got some more nine millimeters sitting here on the front. See the Hyperline logo, I'll hold it up and show that. Some more lead. What else we got? Oh, that's cool. Wadding has to be from the 12 gauge. That's pretty neat. And uh, let me turn around here. You can see the Hyperline branding here with a bullet right behind it. That, Looks like a, that is big. That really deformed. I can't tell if that's a 45 or a nine, but uh, I think this was the 45 down here if I remember on the video correctly. I shot this video a couple days ago, but uh, wow, that thing really flattened out. Let me see if I can peel it out of there. All right. Yep, that's cool. Little T1000 there falling out all mashed up so there's some more up here let's just pull this whole layer off the front that's kind of cool there's more bullets you can see trapped in there or it impacted so these did not go far at all nothing made it through this vest remember that nothing made it through or the ones that did make it through were when we shot it with the just the soft armor I believe we shot it with just a soft armor with a rifle round, which it's not rated for, just to do it because you know why not? And it went through. I think there. I think that's right here. There's a pinhole there. 
Yeah, right there it is. I didn't see that earlier. Right in the sticker. That's where it exited. Um, so yeah. Other than that though, again, that wasn't rated for that. We just wanted to do that for fun. I can pull these rounds out. What the hell was that? That had to be a 45. That was a fatty. Ugh. Yeah. So, uh, interesting to note too, I was going on their website and I was reading up on it before I came in here today. Five year warranty on this like old armor, that's what it's rated for, for UV and sweat, stuff like that. Uh, but if you get shot while wearing it, as long as you have a police report, they'll replace it for free. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's the construction of the Hyperline. You have different layers here, different densities. Uh, pretty cool. And again, all, the only thing that went through was that non-rated rifle round right here through the middle. You can tell nothing else made it through. So now that I made a mess, I uh, hope you guys are more interested in this uh, product. I think it's really neat. Again, we were not paid to do this. It's just kind of fun to go out there and shoot some body armor. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? Um, so if you have any more questions, just check out their website, Safe Light Defense. Again, uh, they hooked us up with an affiliate link, description below, check it out. And you guys can kind of shop around and see if any of this uh, fits in your loadout. Um, you know, shopping for body armor kind of needs to be a thing now. Um, I think you should have something for your whole family. I know I do. I have one for my wife, my daughter, me. So I, we throw it in the you know storage area of her SUV or underneath my backseat of the truck when we go outside of town, like a trip to Orlando or something. So if something cooks off while we're away from home, we can strap up and get home safely. Um, that's just the world we live in, okay? Gotta pull your head out of the sand, be prepared. I know everybody watching this channel is. I know I'm just preaching to the choir here, but uh, if you're going to take a look at body armor, take a look at Safe Life Defense. It's pretty awesome. Um, what else did I want to mention? Oh, Suppress Fest. Sold out day one. So Saturday, November 12th, sold out. If you do not have tickets, do not show up at the gate. We're not selling tickets at the gate. It's online only. We do have tickets left for Sunday, day two, on November 13th. There's like 100 tickets left somewhere around there. So if you want to go, suppressfest.com. There's a full description, frequently asked questions, pictures, videos of past events, full explanation of what's going down this November. Don't miss it if you love suppressors and you want to win cool guns and eat awesome food and take pictures in John Wick's Mach 1 Mustang. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope I didn't ramble too long, but I wanted to kind of come back in the studio, get out of the sun, collect my thoughts, and really give you guys a cool teardown of what happened out there. Because uh, I feel that usually doesn't happen a lot with these type of body armor reviews. So, again, hope you guys liked it. If you want to see more reviews like this, just let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you next video. See ya.